Praise God. Um, it's it's good to be it's good to be back here again this morning. Glory to God. Um, I'm I'm so I'm I'm so excited to see everyone. Um, you know, just just um being being back again here to just um share fellowship with you guys. Um we we will be praying shortly. Um, of course, we will need to look into the word of God and um, set some sort of compass, all right, uh, set some, some kind of coordinate um, for, for our prayer for, for today. Um, I believe the last time I was here was in December. <laughs> okay, so um, all, as, 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 as we always like to say, the last time I was here was last year. <laughs> All right, so it's it's good to see another new year, and um, I I believe that um, God's word has come to you for this year. You have the word of God over your life um, for for this year, um, and I want to believe that the word you are holding on to is no is not a uh, no grief for anybody. I mean, what is that? What is that word that is that is going around now? Anyway, that's not the word for this year. <laughs> All right. So if no grief for anybody is the only word you have, um, you you need to grab the word for this year. And even if you don't have a word for this year, uh, I believe this program started some days back. So uh, between that time and now, from all the men and women of God that have spoken, you probably. Um, would have gotten a word, all right? And if you have not gotten any word yet, um, I, you, I probably will share my own word for the year with you. Maybe you can just uh, pick that one and go and adopt it. But by all means, <laughs> have the word of God as a compass for your navigation this year. Have the word of God as a compass for your navigation this year. Um, one of the things that God has placed on my hand to, to say to you, you know, the more I think about this group and I think about, you know, the commitment of people showing up 6 a.m. every day, just, you know, interceding and praying, you know, I just, I kept thinking about it. You know, one of the things that God said to me was that I said, you guys don't know what is happening to you, right? The truth is, Something is happening to you. Things are happening to people on this group. Things are happening. Things are happening to you. But the truth is that you may not know it yet, okay? You may not know it yet. And the closest example that the Lord gave to me is that, you know, think about it back in the day when we were in primary school. You know, when you are in, when you are in say, primary one, all right, you have first term, second term, third term, all right? Um, when you are in in primary one first term, and you you know you put in a lot of effort, you made progress, and at the end of that first term, they don't promote you from primary one to primary two. All right, you still remain in primary one. Now, on the surface, if someone look at you and look at your state, the person it might be tempted to think that nothing about your life has changed. All right, but because the person does not have a deeper context of your reality, their judgment on the surface about your life is going to be wrong because the truth of the matter is you are actually making the progress. All right, but because on the surface it is it is not what you know the world will call that significant or fall into the category of a significant change. They don't know that something is changing within you. Even you yourself may not know that something is changing within you. You might, you know, just be wondering that okay, people are having testimonies on great testimony, and you look as if I've been faithful, I've been committed to this, but nothing exactly has changed. But I've come to tell you this morning, you know, by the word of the law, something is changing. You might just be in your own um, in your own first term of your current class. Some of you, you are in the second term of your current class. Some of you, you are in the third term of your current class, all right? 
but a lot has changed, you know. But on the day that the final result for that class is going to come, right, and the final change is going to, just going to happen, is what the psalmist described. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said, we were like dead that dream, all right? Because suddenly when the miracle is going to happen, it's going to, you just be asking yourself, what happened to all the processes? You know, all along, God has been building something within you, right? He has been He has been building you and preparing you for something. And then when eventually he just met that switch and you are just wondering, God, what, what, what's, what's going on here? And that's going to be somebody's testimony on this platform this year in the name of Jesus. So I've come to give you that assurance that something is moving, something is changing. Okay, something is breaking. Um, uh, 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 um, God is speaking for you in certain quarters, all right? Platforms are being prepared for you, okay? Thrones are being prepared for you, which brings me to the next conversation because I perceive strongly, all right, that one of the things that is being released into this house is a kingly authority to begin to take possession of thrones and territories, all right, a kingly anointing to begin to take possessions of thrones and territory. Oh, glory to God. Kingly anointing. Ah, oh, Jesus, Jesus. I, I don't know why I'm going this direction. You know, I've tried very hard to just stay. Let's go into the message. But I think I need to, I, I believe I need to bring this assurance to, 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 to one or two people again. Because, you know, the Bible says, once has the Lord spoken, twice have I heard. God is bringing kingly anointing so that people are beginning to take over thrones and territory. Thrones and territories. Thrones and territory. Okay. Ah, meho she brande kobe dosi kabalado. Ze kubre na meso kopra de keto male. Zianda barato zeba. Elaka toze kete baliwa. You know, especially for uh, I I I don't know. I, I I think you know this is especially for some of you that you are probably um joining from from you know Northern America, especially United States. You know, I I see I see. Uh, uh, brother Oluwole, I believe you are in Texas, right? Uh -huh, I think you are one of these people. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I feel, uh, do we have any other person from Texas? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I, I, you know, I, it, it's almost like the Lord is, is saying, like, like he said in Psalm, Psalms chapter uh, two, I believe, verse eight. All right, it said, "Ask me, and I will make nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession." Hallelujah. All right. So, uh, but he said you should ask him because it is the desire of the Father to make nations your inheritance. Hallelujah. Uh, he, he is he is making nations your inheritance. Some of you need to, you know, you, you need to this year move away from the mindset of individual success, all right? You need to move into the realm of thinking nations. Glory. <laughs> Some of you need to move into the realm of, you know, having a national possession mindset, okay? You need to start thinking of things, you know, from a national point of view, um, and, and this is irrespective of what country you are. I mean, I, I just mentioned Texas because I saw Texas, okay? Uh, <laughs> all right. But I, we all need to start having, you know, that, 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 that nation mindset. And as God begin to give you that national takeover, you know, in, in Jeremiah chapter, chapter 1, verse 10, I believe, you know, he said, See that I appoint you over nations and kingdoms. And there are a lot of things you are going to be doing, is, you know, in, in, in that scripture, I believe he said, he said to uproot, to tear down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build up, to plant. So, I, 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 and, you know, I, I believe that there are some of us, all right, there are some of us that, you know, God is going to be ordaining you to carry out all of those Jeremiah mandate. Amen. You, you know, some of you are going to, he's going to be raising you as uprooters 
and 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 you know people who are going to tear down people who are going to you know you are going to overthrow you are going to build for some it's going to be specific for some God is going to raise you that you just help me tear down there are some things that have been instituted they are not to my glory just, your own mission is just to be tearing down don't worry I'm bringing somebody else to come and be just tear it down for some of you as you are you know as you are tearing down it's going to be raising you to it's going to be raising you to build. It's going to be raising you. To, but I'm, by all means, okay, I want you to embrace. There is a release of a kingly ordination, a release of thrones and territory, a release of thrones and territory. I, 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 you know, for 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 some of us, for some of us, ah, Holy Spirit, thank you. Um, this is not my message. Though. I don't know why I'm, why, I'm, why I'm going this direction, but I I feel strongly that I need to I need to bring I need to bring confirmation to somebody's soul, and I need to drive it so hard into your soul, you know, so that um ah yekorato sekele mandara ba zobarato kolo sekele ba you know ah thank you Jesus. It is important to drive it into your soul because you see. Um, in, you know, you know, in, in that in, in that Jeremiah chapter one, you know, one of the things the Lord said to Jeremiah, I said, "Do not be afraid of their faces." He said, "For I am with you to deliver you," says the Lord. He said, <laughs> "Then the Lord put forth, you know, He put forth His hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, "Behold, I have put my words into your mouth." You know, I, I believe one of the reasons why it's very you know, it's very important for me to stress, to stress. You, know, you can see the way I'm stressing it personally. Is that some of you, by the time this kingdom come before you, you will now start acting like Israelites. You, you know how the Israelites were acting, right? You know, when, when, when they, they saw the land right before them, but they were afraid of the giant. But the truth of the matter is, as God is delivering the throne for you, hmm, I promise you that throne is not vacant. That territory is not vacant. Okay? So when you get there and you start seeing giants, the giant will be there. Oh, God is not going to get rid of the giant before you get there. Eh? <laughs> you will see. So maybe that's why God wants me to stress it so that some of you, if I, uh, some of you, you, you are probably already in the land, all right? And, and then you are already seeing some giants. Uh, and you are already thinking of making a U-turn. You are you're already trying to convince yourself that this is the sign. I don't think the Lord is sending me uh, to, to do this. I've come to tell you that thing that is telling you that thing is not of God. All right? God wants you to go against those giant head on. Okay? He wants you to go against those giant head on. And he said to, you know, Jeremiah, what has he given to him? He said, I have given, put my word in your mouth. I have put, see, more than any other year, if there is any year where you must get yourself soaked into the word of the Lord, you know, you know, like, like Jeremiah said, he said, it is, it, it is like fire shot into my bone. If there is any year where you must get yourself soaked into the word of God, until you can literally feel that it is it is like it's shot in your bone. It is this year. Because it is by that word of your testimony that you are going to overcome. It is by that word of your testimony that you are going to possess those territories. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, leho makata barada bazobe la suseliande. Ende brebo kosababalata. Ele de brumasito coporobo zegere de bosa cabalata de no bariandi. El libre cabarata cozequete querendo bromos candalaba. Lei corobo sabalada babarada bazeco poton de le baradi. El linda brama sacanda barade suke broke to cabalia. Eliando ramasuke barata calabaya. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We, we ask, Lord, that your word will, will come forth with power, with grace, with simplicity to us this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. Um, all of what I just said, um, they are not even my message. I'm not even sure if they have anything to do with my message. I don't even know where I'm going, <laughs> where I'm, where I'm going that direction. So now I need to I need to focus on my focus. I need to get into my message. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. Um, Isaiah chapter 44. Uh Isaiah chapter 44. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Um, we are going to read from verse 24, from verse 24 to um to verse 26. From verse 24 to verse 26. Um glory to Jesus, glory to Jesus, glory to Jesus. Uh I believe. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, there is, sorry, I'm, I'm seeing a name. Okay, now I'm, I'm not seeing it in the spirit. I'm seeing it on, <laughs> on this Zoom call. Um, uh, uh, this name, Bridget, uh, Bridget E. Carbon. I don't know whether the person is a male or a female, but there is, um, there is a word I need to give to you. Um, I trust that it, it, it makes sense to you. It's in Genesis chapter 28, verse 15, okay? Genesis chapter 28, verse 15, you know? And, and you know, this was when he was um, speaking to, what was the name of Jesus? He said, behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you, until I have done what I have promised you, all right? Uh, that's the word, that, you know, it's the same word that God was saying to Jacob back in the day. Um, I, I hope, I, I believe you probably have more context, you know, for how that word um, is, is relevant to you. I, I hope you have more uh, personal context, um, and if it doesn't make sense to you now, I, I believe somehow the Holy Spirit would, um, would help you to make sense of it. Glory to God. All right, so let's go into our scripture for today. Um, Isaiah chapter 44, from verse 24 to verse 26. Verse 24 to verse 26. Ale to zamenamboro kazebele koriandiba. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. All right. So it says, Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer. Now, not the, the first word there. This is not any other person speaking. This is the Lord speaking. Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer. And he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things that stretch forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Verse 25, that frustrated the tokens of the liars and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward and maketh their knowledge foolish. Now, this is where I am going, which is verse 26. All right, he said, and that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers that sent to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. Now, I want to read verse 26 in a more contemporary version in the living Bible. Now, listen to what verse 26 says, and, and that's where I'm going, which is which was I needed to provide that context. All right. He said, But what my prophet say, I do. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, When they say Jerusalem will be delivered, and the cities of Judah will live once again, it shall be done. Did you hear that? God did not say that. 
my prophet do what I say, even though that in itself is correct. But this time around, God is saying that what my prophet says, that's what I do. Hey, somebody is not getting it. God is literally saying that it is possible for my prophet to come to a level where, you know, when they speak, I do. I, I do. I, I didn't do it because I was the one who commanded it in the first place. No, because they have commanded it, I am obligated to do it. Ah, so somebody is not getting it. Now, see, let, 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 let me give you a good example. You know, for, for those that are married, you know, there is a kind of relationship you have with your spouse that ordinarily your spouse could make a lot of decisions on your behalf, all right? And because they could make a lot of decisions on your behalf, even if you are not there to, to, to consent to that decision, you will trust that they know you enough to know what your position will be, all right? But you do know that there are times when, even though they know you enough to know what your position will be, there are other contexts that they may not be aware of that might have made you decide otherwise, all right? But by the time you arrive the scene, right, based on the understanding and the knowledge of the relationship that your spouse have with you, they already made a decision of commitment. When you get to this spot, you don't turn around and say no. You, you go ahead and bind yourself to that commitment. Then you go back home and you start figuring out together. You can now go back and express, you know, a different context in which even though what they have decided is not so far from the answer, you would have done something differently, but you will not disagree with that decision right there. You will allow the result to progress. God says that my prophet, my servant, my people can come to a realm of understanding, of knowledge, of relationship in me, where the reason why I do what they say is not because I was the one that commanded it in the first place, but because I cannot afford to allow their words to fall to the ground. So because they have said so, then it is so. <laughs> because they have said so, it is so. You know, the first time I heard Archbishop Benson in Dausa says, you know, something like, when your faith says yes, God will not say no. I said, how, 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 how audacious, what kind of arrogance is this? What? You know, but as I began to look into the scriptures, I understood that there is a realm a man can come into and he possesses authority in God. The reason why God does what he has said is because he has said so already. You know, the only solution is for God to intervene before he says it. Otherwise, the moment he says it, that's the end. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like let me give you an example. You know, the, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 19. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 19. The Bible tells us that Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his word fall to the ground. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says God did not allow any of his word to come to him because the guy has come into this realm of authority that we are talking about. All right? So God did not allow... In other words, there was... The anything that God will not do, the solution is that before Samuel we say it, he needs to go ahead and intervene. And we saw that play out practically when he went to ordain um um uh what was what's his name when when he went to ordain David, right? Um for Samuel chapter 16. The Bible says when he arrived the place, hey <laughs> when he arrived the place. You know, the man of God, don't forget, you see, don't, 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 no, no, listen to the context. Listen to the context. Listen to the context. When Samuel ordained Saul, 
there was a profile. God gave him a revelation of who the king is going to be. All right. And this man fit into a particular physical structure. Okay. And that structure is a structure that is a perfect fit because it was in the days of war. All right. And the days of war did not end in the days of Saul. Hope you remember your Old Testament. All right. David fought a lot of battle in his time until the days of, of Solomon before there was relative peace. All right. Now, the point is, at the time he came to the house of Jesse, when he looked at the children, there was only one person that fit the same profile of what God used to ordain the initial king. All right? And because this guy has related with God for a while, he was quick to make an assumption that, oh, okay, this is the picture of the guy God chose the last time. So, behold, the Lord's anointed. All right? And the moment he said it, all the host of heaven said, ah, wahala. He said, guys, oh, yeah, 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 everybody, action. He, this man was not ordained that guy. If he ordained him, that's the end. Though. Not, there is nothing we can do again. And we all know that this guy is, he is, not, he is not the person. So the Bible says there was an interruption almost immediately. The Lord said, ah, Samuel, uh, you are still using that old template. No, 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 no. Ah, come on, you can't do that. Don't look at his appearance. Because I have rejected him. I'm taking you through all of that to help you to understand, you know, how serious it is when the Lord, through knowledge, through relationship, bring his men into a realm of authority where they command things that are not in existence. And God is compelled immediately to bring them into existence. Hallelujah. Now, the, 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 the power of that is that the things that the people begin to command at that point, all right? And we, we, we saw realities of that, all right? Even in the New Testament, all right? And that's what the Bible was talking about when it says, um, you know, in, in part, not, not entirely, you know. One of the things you, you see when, when, when Paul talked about prophecy is that people can prophesy according to a measure of faith that is given to them. Amen. All right. There is a dimension of prophecy that is a function of the measure of faith that the people have. So what does that mean? In other words, it is like when you, what is the closest example I can give? It's like when you, when you work in an office and you have, there is something they call impress, I believe. All right. If there is an expenditure that need to happen and it is within the profile of your impress, all right, is within the set amount, okay, in the political space, I believe they call that a security vote, all right, it's a big sum of money that is kept somewhere that nobody knows the amount where you can spend <laughs> without questioning, all right, so impress in, in a more local balance where you can spend without question i mean not, not essentially without questioning but um, you can exercise discretion in making judgment call over that spending all right so I, and I, I i diverted to go tell you that before somebody will say no this thing you are talking about is a no testament <laughs> is a lie when paul judged that guy that was interrupting his service and he said, he said, you shall be blind for a while. He didn't hear from the Lord before he pronounced that judgment. <laughs> it is because he has something with the Lord. He, he operates a certain level of authority. And I'm taking time to talk through all of this because I believe that in our time, God is bringing men into that realm. Hallelujah. All right. So um, so back to, 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 to what I was saying. The point is, God switches to action to create things. So 
this level of authority is it it empower us with co-creative ability after the order of god it it means that you can speak into existence things that literally you know it, <coughs> At the time you are saying it, the technology to make it happen does not exist, but it does not change the fact that once you have spoken, <laughs> all the resources of everyone is deployed to bring an accomplishment. All right? And where we are going this morning is how do we get there? But you see, I'm trying to help you understand the beauty of living in that realm so that as we begin to understand the pathway into that realm your mind is set to get there you know uh, you know if 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 you don't have a motivation to go to a place even if i draw the map of the place to you uh, you will feel lazy about it and you say look this map is confusing you know what let me just stay here on my lane and everybody is all right all right <laughs> okay and that's why i'm taking time to help you understand the beauty of sitting in that realm of authority and that god wants you to be there all right uh finally let me give you one more instance so you remember um when Elisha spoke, you know, concerning the famine that was going on, you know, and he said, by this time tomorrow in the market of Samaria, he said, six quarts of choice flour will cost one piece of silver and 12 quarts of barley grain will cost one piece of silver. All right. At the time, you know, and you remember there was this, this um, high ranking officer that said, Man of God, man of God, man of God, please be, be coming down, be, <laughs> be coming down, be coming down. Even if God open, you see, we are quick to dismiss that guy as a faithless person. But the reality is, it is, it is almost the same if I were to tell you today that the exchange rate of Naira to dollar by this time tomorrow, it's going to be one error to one dollar. All right? You can have a mental ascent, but you will not walk away convinced. All right? Why? It, you, so a part of you does not feel it is impossible, but you, you are thinking about all the, all the fiscal policies and all the global international economies that need to come into place for that to happen and all the intricacies of the economies you know say all those things now for this realm you know in the realm of El Shaddai nobody is thinking of fiscal policy <laughs> when, <laughs> when God is pronouncing blessing upon a man the economy will stand still. The economy will crumble and the man will prosper inside the crumbling economy. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, so, and uh, the, 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 where I'm even going is that when Elisha spoke those words, it wasn't God asking Elisha to say, all right, man of God, I have come. This is my mind by tomorrow. No, that's not what happened. If, if, and in fact, for you to be able to understand the context very well, you have to read the previous chapter. Something happened in the previous chapter. A widow was talking to the king, asking the king to come to her rescue because the farmer was so serious that her neighbor conspired with her to kill her own child the previous day so that the following day they can eat you. You, you remember that story, all right? And when the, that story was mentioned to the king, the Bible says he became grieved, all right? And then he tore his clothes. It was the anger of the king in that moment of anger that the king said, you know what? I am going to cut off the head of Elisha today because how can we have a prophet in this land? And God is watching us suffering in this family. 
The Bible says the moment the king made that decision, Elisha was in his house, all right, but he, he, he could hear the decision of the king from far away, all right? And Elisha said, so it was in response to that, that Elisha now said, okay, you know what, that's fine. Um, now that you have said, I need to do something about it, it's okay. Um, well, tomorrow this famine will be gone. It will be over. It, it, it's that's, that's literally the context in which Elisha was saying, it. go, go, and, go and study that scripture. It was almost like, Elisha was like, okay, well, 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 okay, calm down, calm down. The question you ask yourself is, Elisha too was inside that same country where famine was so severe that people were killing each other. All right. And up until that time, he was not bothered. How do you think he was surviving? You see, there is another, I'm, I'm telling you, when the Lord pronounced his blessing right upon you, you operate within another economy, within an economy. You see, and someone said, look, these things you are saying, you know, it's just a statement of faith, it's not possible. I said, look, it is like when rain is falling in an environment, and I decided to mount a canopy. I did not leave the environment where the rain is falling, but the rain is not going to beat me. I'm going to walk around under my canopy with a dry cloth rejoicing and smiling, and I can even organize party, all right? And people will be wondering, but rain is falling in this whole area and everybody is drenched in the water that is coming from that rain. How come your case is different? Because I have built another economy within the economy. So what is what 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 is impacting people's lives within this economy does not affect me. I am telling you that there is a provision in El Chadai that makes that possibility possible even in the realm of impossibility like ours. Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> and we have to ascend higher to a level of authority in order to be able to combine those possibilities. But those possibilities exist in our God. So, all, all this while, Elijah was not bothered because it worked for him. Yes, there is famine. So everything said, oh, there is famine, things are bad. He is hearing the news because the Bible said that only with your ears will you be hearing. So you are not, it's not that you will turn on the news, you will hear the news. Everybody will complain. The economy is bad. You don't know what they are talking about because you operate another economy within the economy. Glory to God. All right. But when people think carnally, it is impossible for them to come into comprehension and apprehension of these realities. But guys, these are possibilities in God. So it wasn't until that time that they said, look, uh, man of God, if you don't do something, the man was like, calm down. It's not that hard. Okay, tomorrow, the famine will be over. You know? Things will go back to normal. <laughs> and when he said it, and I'm trying to help you understand why that 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 high ranking officer cannot make sense of it. You know, he would have expected that man of God say, okay, guys, okay, no problem. I will go and pray to God. All right. Let's see what God will do. You know, things will get back to normal. Let's just be hopeful. Let's be looking forward. Things will balance at some point. The Lord will have mercy on us at some point. You know, it's, it's, it's a small spot. Things will be. Mm -mm. The man said, tomorrow, tomorrow, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Now, I have taken you through all of this to help you understand that there is a realm in God where I call the realm way of speaking for God. Now, Coming into that realm, you need to have overcome two realms, all right? Which is where I'm going to walk you through, or what I call the pathway to the realm of speaking for God. The first realm you have to conquer is the realm of speaking to God, okay? Which is 
as basic as possible for every one of us, all right? It is the realm where we must be able to go to God with our request, and it's okay. Very basic, but it's, it's great. Because the response to us in the realm of speaking to God is that God also speaks to us, all right? When you are in the realm of speaking to God, you speak to God and God speaks to you, okay? You go to God with issues and matters and, um, and you know, God will respond based on those things. He could respond to you directly. He could give a word through somebody, you know, and sometimes he respond by producing results. All right. You go to him. You need healing for your body. He respond by giving you healing for your body. It becomes a fantastic testimony. We celebrate. The problem is that most believers don't stop at the realm of speaking to God. So they speak to God about things and about matters and God, in, you know, in response, speak to them back. All right. And sometimes the speaking is that he gives them a result in response. Sometimes he gives them a word in response. He gives them something in response. That is a level. And it's a very fantastic level, but it is a level you should desire to step away from. All right? And step into the next level, which is this level of speaking with God. Okay? So you can be speaking to God and you are not speaking with God. All right, because at the realm of speaking with God, the response also is that God speak with you. There is a difference between God speaking to you and God speaking with you. You know, when I was preparing for this meeting and God, you know, said this to me, and I'm like, huh. <laughs> I said, ah, this is, is, you know, just preparing for this meeting was, 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 it was a stretch for me because God was, talking about things that I'm like, really, that one too is possible. I didn't know. I said, he said, okay, now you know. So, <laughs> you know, I've been swimming in, in some realities for some days. And I, my job tonight, I've come to invite you into the pool. You know, some of you, we will drag you into the pool tonight. We will. <laughs> Kabo Yagaba. Some of you, we will, we will, you know, I know some of you, 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 are, you, are, you are trying to play it safe, <laughs> but no, no more playing safe. This year, no more playing. There is no Christianity of playing safe this year. No playing safe. All right. We will push you into the river. Hmm? Uh, yes, until the river overflows you and you are drenched. In, and <laughs> so you will swim <laughs> with the tide. Glory to God. All right. So you can be, you can be speaking to God, but not speaking with God, all right? In speaking with God is the realm where you leave the matters and you minister unto the Lord, all right? It's a realm of priesthood, okay? You leave all the, in fact, the only time you talk about matters arising is when the matters arise when you are in the court of the Lord, all right? It is a realm where you go before the Lord and you, you come for nothing with nothing, you just come with yourself alone. All right. It is the realm where it is just about fellowship. It is the realm where you are just constantly going to fellowship and learn what is the newest things. You are learning what is the latest announcement in the realm of the elders. That's what you are learning. It is a realm. Ah, <laughs> You know, I, I, I used to give this example. You know, I was um, I was in Abuja, you know, some 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 years back for an official event. So the following morning of the event, in my hotel room, I just said, let me spend some time praying, you know? And um, I mean, when I want to, in fact, it's interesting that day because I said, ah, God, I don't want to spend more than 30 minutes because of all the other itinerary and all of that. Um, someone that I want to go and visit, um, you know, we're supposed to go to my friend Nikes' house and pray and all of that. So, you know, I had, you know, a pretty long day. When I was setting the alarm so that I don't exceed that 30 minutes, <laughs> I said to one hour 30 minutes. <laughs> so, and I know that if that alarm does not ring, I'm not going to stand up from that place. But the whole idea is I don't want to in try to do 30 minutes now, go and do one hour or do 40 minutes. That would 
So unfortunately, I said one hour, 30 minutes. So, and then I started, you know, and it's interesting because when I began to pray, so God came to me and, you know, he started engaging me in a conversation. And till today, I don't know the relevance of that conversation. <laughs> God was telling me about the mystery of iniquity and, you know, uh, you know how, you know, the danger of some spiritual sexual sin and all of that. And I'm like, okay, I'm enjoying this conversation because these are things I've never heard before. I can't even teach them because I can't get, I mean, I have a policy that I cannot teach something that I have not been able to validate through the scriptures. But those were deep things. So I was enjoying that moment. Apparently, <laughs> there was no alarm to stop me for some reason. God, God found a way to take care of that. So I was just enjoying this conversation and all of that. So when the alarm was not ringing, in my head, I'm like, God, it should have been past 30 minutes that I've been here. And I'm like, I need to go to Nikes place. I said, I'm no longer going to her place. She said she's not going to be at home. She's going to the office. You know, and just while I was saying that, God said to me, said, no, you are not going to Nikes office. Said, I already took Nikes back home. Said, you are not going to say, so stay here. Let's have this conversation. Let's have this. I said, okay. So I now said, okay, let me call the other person. I said, there is no point. You just, I took care of all of that already. So I was there, you know. Well, I finally finished. I think it was about some two hours or two hours plus or there, but I can't remember. When I finished and I checked my phone, my friend had texted me. She was driving to the office between her house and the first bus stop. She had run his stomach twice. So she came back home and she got back home. She was perfectly fine. She cannot understand it. So I, she just texted me to let me know that she's no longer in the office. She's at home. All right. I saw it and I just laughed. So when we got there, you know, we started, we we're praying as we were praying. You know, then God started talking to us about another friend of ours that was in another country. And God was saying, look, this information I'm giving you guys is coded. You know, God was telling us about what is going to happen to them in the future. And he was like, it's coded. Don't tell them I told you to. Just keep the information. Don't worry. When it is time, I'm going to tell them that I told you and they will come back to you. And it happened exactly like that. You know, but I left that place and I was, <laughs> and I was, you know, I was coming back to Lagos that day and I was going and the Lord said to me, said, you know, and, and one of the things I wanted to tell you is that when you come to this realm, prayer is no longer something you do, it's not something you do as a matter of, as a, Every minute of your life, you are literally in communion with God. All right? It's as if you you, you've prayed, you've left the house, but the conversation is still ongoing. You don't understand. The conversation is still ongoing. You will be in the office. You are doing something else. In fact, you are eating lunch. And then you will just out of the blue, just bring a random scripture and wants to discuss with the hands this particular scripture you always think that you know what it means say oh yeah calm down let me tell you something else that you don't know you know it was in the process of this kind of conversation that i came to a realization that scriptures are portals scriptures they are gateways in spirit realm as in if you meditate on a scripture long enough you will break into a realm and people will not be able to, they will think you are mad, but you will operate in the reality of that realm because you can see the invisible. I was, I left the house. I was, you know, they called a cab for me. The guy was driving me. 
when it was 15 minutes to get to a particular checkpoint, the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, they are going to stop you at a particular checkpoint. He said, that police officer is in need and is desperate. He said, he is going to ask you for money. He said, give him the last money that you have on your, in your hand. And, you know, <laughs> for, some, for, for some of us that don't like to give police money, <laughs> God needs to come long ahead. I come and tell me. So I dip my hand to my pocket and I brought, I think, 500 naira or 1,000 naira. The cab driver was furious. Said, how can I give that much money <laughs> to a police? He does not get it. And there is no way I can explain it to him. By the time I arrived at the airport, I was, I had no cash on me. And I got there, you know, and I was still communion continue. And the Holy Spirit says to me, when you arrive there, because you are going to need cash. I said, well, technically, you kind of asked me to give out the last cash on me. He said, well, go get cash over there. I said, I don't see where there is cash anywhere here. I only see people say, <laughs> he said, go and meet that guy. That guy standing there said, he has cash to give you. So I went to the guy and said, um, I need cash. He said, oh, interesting. He said, yeah, I I do ATM business. I can give you cash. Bring your ATM card. You know, he gave me cash. I got on the plane. By the time I arrived in Lagos, I tried using my Uber app. I tried using my Tanzify app. None, all the driver hand suit on me. And I had to bring out cash and go and take a cab. You know, and as I was walking towards the cab, he told me specifically the one that is my driver. When I got there, the chairman of the park took me out, gave me to another person. I entered the cab. The person rejected me. They had to bring me back to the earlier person. And I told you, I said, I know you were my driver. The guy drove me home, all right? And, you know, series of conversations just continue like that. But my point is, at this realm, that is where you will see, uh, for want of a better word, the pettiness of God. As in, you will, you will be surprised how God is interested in the pettiest of things. You don't understand. As in, at this realm, he is speaking, he's, he's having, he's a communion. He will complain about your hairstyle. He will come, he will literally, he will talk about your, your shoe. He will talk about your dressing. He will talk about, ah, God. Oh, my equal Sunday level. Now, a lot of the conversation you are going to be having, a lot of the conversation you are going to be having, they don't have any... They are sometimes what you can call inconsequential. But guess what God is doing? God is building a fellowship. He is getting you to understand how much he's interested in the details of your life. You know why? The Bible tells us that the love of God constrains us he is bringing you into his, is what I call the wooing of the spirit. All right? He will, he will start with small, small things. And then he will come into the realm of tapping you in the night. Unconvenient time. And just wake you up and say, I need you to pray. In fact, sometimes he wake you up to pray for the something that you, you will almost literally want to say it does not make sense. All right? And it, the fact that you you do it so does not mean that you will see anything coming out of it. He will just wake you up and say, you need to pray for your mother-in-law that God will keep her in perfect health. Now, six months down the line, your mother-in-law is not sick, nothing happened. You will be wondering, so why did he disturb my sleep to pray that prayer? It will not, a lot of things that we are going to be doing will not make sense. All right? But guess what he's doing? He is, he is, you know, when the Bible says that the love of God constrains us, he's building a love relationship with you such that 
it's hard for you to say no to God because you know God loves you so much and because you love him in return. Now, what that is doing to you is that it's bringing you to a place of submission and authority. All right, you are fully submitted to God. Now, remember what James says about resisting the devil. All right, he said, he said, submit yourself, therefore, to God. He said, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, the only reason why he's going to flee, all right, is because your exercise of authority is within the context of an authority. All right. God brings you into a realm and the output of that realm is authority. God, through this love relationship, brings you to a realm where you are absolutely submitted to him. You do, you don't. And what will begin to happen to you in the process of that intercourse is, is that you begin to understand the ways of God. You begin to understand the ways of God. You begin now. It is the discernment of the ways of God that brings you into that realm of authority, where you can speak boldly on the behalf of God. Because now you understand the ways of God. That's how you come into this realm of authority. That's how you wield this power. All right. And when you come into the realm of this authority that we are talking about, as I round up, one of the things that is the beauty of stepping into this realm of authority is that the jealousy of the Lord comes into play. Ah! Oh, have you ever witnessed what jealousy of a spouse is in a relationship? You can insult that person. It's okay. But when you insult the spouse, then there is gonna be a problem. <laughs> All right, the jealousy of God. Now, that is what we saw coming to play in the life of Moses. All right, when people gossip about Moses, Moses did not even hear, but God heard. <laughs> God called there, he said, Miriam, I understand though that you were the one washing Moses' diaper back in the day, but those moments are over. He said, he said, do you know what you are doing? He said, he said, Moses, he said, I spoke to him face to face as a man speak to his friend. Do you understand what that means? Moses has passed from the stage of God speaking to him to the stage of him speaking with God and God speaking with him. So God himself, he said, I spoke to him as a man speak to his friend. He said, so he has passed that stage. And now he understands my ways. So Moses literally could speak on my behalf. So excuse me, who are you? Who are you? The jealousy of God swung into action. Oh, leso darababaya katalabaya. You see, when the jealousy of God swings into action on your behalf, even you, you can't even beg God. <laughs> you, you can't even. You can say, oh, God, God, please. You know, I know He's. I know you are trying to fight the God. Say, no, 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 no. Step, step, step aside. Step, step aside. Step aside. Ayanabu shakalabaya. Somebody is stepping into the realm of authority with God. Somebody is stepping into the realm of authority with God. Somebody is stepping into the realm of authority with God. I'd like us to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, wherever we are right now, and say, Lord, I step into relationship with you. I don't know what level you find yourself right now. Can you begin to pray this morning and say, Lord, I want to go in deeper. I want to go in deeper. I want to go in deeper. I want to take me deeper. Take me deeper. Lord, take me deeper. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Masu zeketeliaba. Ekende lebro maseketeriba. E robo boko zoko to robo kosikalabaya. I am tired of the ordinary. There is more within. There is more within. There is more within. 
lei cobre catuze le gererebo sakatariaba rende babre que suke le bobo romos kende le borobo seteliba don't joke with it don't joke with it make de le brabu seko paradito sekeliba letra baba ba Oh, there are realms in God. When God takes you deeper, in Jesus' name we have prayed. You see, I believe God wants to take some people on a journey. Ah, guys, there are realms in God. Moses Writing the book of Genesis, he said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Okay, calm down. Dear Mr. Moses, you were not born until Exodus. You, that you are telling us about this beginning, where were you? <laughs> See, there is such a thing called time travel in the realm of the spirit. You can time travel into generations upon generations before you are born. You will travel down back. You will go and correct things and then you will come back and come and implement the reality in your own generation. Ah, oh. <laughs> you, oh, I feel that some people need to travel this journey. Can we pray and say, God, Deeper, 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 deeper. God, can you call me to ascend higher? Call me to ascend higher. Call me to ascend higher. I want to go deeper with you so that I can be called to ascend higher to your realms. Marco Baba Indra mama santo libra katunde bleke suzori andere mo kori andara bakuri baba sketeri mo lembre kete keti balaba ya hey ko pala tu zekelete zozo kabra gigi gagu gaye gege de ko romanda la bromes kabala barada ba ye de 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 lebre ketu abala gada makala ma ye gege 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 bos zende bradi ko pamre kete le baradi ko skandal ya takaba Jesus in Jesus name we have prayed um do we have anybody here from Ohio? I believe it is pronounced Ohio. Uh, Brother Oluwale, how, how do you people used to call it? There is that state that is O H I O uh, in the US. Ohio. Okay, all right. Yeah. Do you have anybody from Ohio? I saw it, please. Yes. Um, Pasi. There's a lady here. Her name is Pasi. Oh, she's from Ohio. She's in Ohio. Okay. Um, because um, I'm taking to a street. And I mean, I, I know that it's Ohio. And I know Ohio is in the US. That's about all I know. Uh, but I'm on a street. Uh, and I'm seeing a house that, that look like, uh, uh, looks a little old, 
it's yeah, it's 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 a bit of an older house, and um, Ainato Bello Saka de Brumeke Cindy Alaba. And right now, I'm actually having a glimpse of the inside of the house. I don't know why God, what God wants me to see, but I just maino shekopra de kelimanta bramesian de lebaya. Sorry, uh, that person is is she is she a doctor, a nurse? Because I saw like a clothes hang somewhere in the house that kind of want to suggest that the person is. Pass you can unmute your mic. She's a nurse. She's she's a nurse. Okay. I honestly don't I don't know why. But right now I again I'm seeing I don't know whether this is your house, but I'm seeing it it's like it's it's uh you know it's like it's partly wooden floor and partly uh what do you call it? You know, uh, it's uh, tiles, partly tiles. You know, I don't know if 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 that's your house or God is just showing me a particular house for a reason. I don't know, but I see that this house, this particular house that I can see, there is. It's almost like the sitting room, and I'm seeing it's like there is a part, you know, that is. <laughs> There is a part that is is wooden floor. There is a part, and I think that part is towards the dining. For what I'm seeing, it's 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 um it's tile ish, you know. And I'm seeing like um, a coffee brown stool ish somewhere on one side with a I don't know if the Jesus. color is ash leather. Yes. Right. Right. And I'm still trying to figure out why I'm seeing this much detail. But I think God wants me to be absolutely certain that it is you. Mary Ato Kapale no skin the rebo sibarate keliba. Um I'm, Ah, uh, uh, there, there, there are a lot of things coming, and yeah. mm. I'm going to have to apologize to you in advance before I ask you this question. But unfortunately, I need to ask. I I'm seeing a, a boy that a young small boy that looks so much like you. I don't know if he's your son, wow. but it's it's almost like I'm seeing wow. there is a man that is missing somewhere in between you and him. He's giving me oh. a sense that you are, you are, are you a single mom? Yes, sir. I don't know what <laughs> see there are because the 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 word that is coming is that God I I I and I'm not I, I'm not even gonna go into the details of whatever happened to your husband. I have a fair idea, especially because of the word that is coming. Um Number one, God says for your shame, he's going to give you double. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two, he said he's going to close up that pain. He's going to close up that pain. So um, so he kind of give me a fair guess of what, what, what happened to your husband. But God says he's going to close the and he says I should tell you. Ah, no masquerato keleman de brai. Kebo sitabaya. Listen. You, I am not so by man the You are such a committed person to God that 
people wonder why that would happen to someone like you. And even you contemplated why, all right? But much more than that, I perceive that there is so much of you that is so giving to God. Um, I, and I just want to tell you that God has not forgotten your labor of love. Amen. <laughs> when the Lord returned the captivity of Zion, you will be like they that dream. Amen. All right? Like they that dream. And ah, you're so bad at the Calabaya. You see, just picture for a moment the kind of restoration that happened after what happened to Job happened. God mm. is giving you such a restoration that your pain will disappear. Amen. Ah. See, this pain has created a hole in your heart. God Himself, you, you see. And that, you know, that, that's the interesting thing, that despite your pain, you still pick up yourself and you still give up yourself fully unto the Lord. All right? <laughs> I, the God of heaven is not ignorant of your sacrifices. Amen. And he is committed to you. Hallelujah. The everything may not look like it right now, but God is committed to you. Amen. God is committed to you. You have no idea the kind of place you hold in God's heart. Amen. I'm and I Pray for you. Ah, that's so so bad. Take the man the river. Imre kezo kolo bonye kedeba. There is restoration. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There is restoration. In the Amen. name of Jesus. There is restoration. In Amen. the name of Jesus. We people endure for the night. But joy is coming in the morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, Makabala to Sekele Mambre Kazo Karabase to Andele Broma Zendi. Jeke Pabata Kalamande Rebo Sopoto Robo Zeke Tekele Baraka Sakatalabaya. Ande Breko Posu Praike Le Bazo Katele Bande. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Um, Oof, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Mekrado baso kopoto libra kazata lambaya. I want us to just pray that prayer once more before we close this morning. I said, Lord, I'm tired of the ordinary. I know there are deeper depths in you. I know there are higher heights in you. Lord, I want you to take me into them. Lord, I want you to take me, take me, take me into that depth. Take me to that height. Lord, I am, I need you to get tired of living ordinary this morning. That's the, I want you to be angry. Get tired of living ordinary and say, God, I am not ordinary. And I refuse to live ordinary in the name of Jesus. I refuse to live ordinary. I refuse to live ordinary. I refuse to live ordinary. Makretopo sakabala kadabale. Lebre kasumbre keteke le mandrebo. Le grege de babraka tu sekebele. Rume keteke leba. I refuse to live ordinary. I refuse to live ordinary. Mekronde go boko sakatabadi. Le krede baku breke sekele manderebo. Manda brako pate ke le brege de debo. Rete ke zeke parakatakaba. Randa ka parakabala koko bege le le mende ke debo. Inde breke te ke zeke te. Susu ka brakataka babala gadaba. Inanderebo boko so kotorobo. Zekete kelebari kasu zekete. I refuse to be ordinary. I refuse to live ordinary. In the name of Jesus. 
I refuse to live ordinary. I refuse to live ordinary. I refuse. There are heights. There are heights. There are heights. And Lord, I want to step into them. There are depth, depth, depth in you. Lord, I want to step into them. Ikebe toko sakataba. Rakoko toko manderebo. Lika bakatu keba. Ikete ko brama sakata kabali. Leko gindaraba koskete riba. I refuse to be ordinary. I refuse to be ordinary. Ma bretos ken de lebra kapori akataba. In lembre keteke bele kobra de gede maragada balabas ken telebro moskonda boria. Lengra ba manto breke si keteke le bora do washandalaba. In de ble keteke zo breke teke leba. Rakaba te komenderebo. Libre ke su kababa ba le keteke rebo satuka libre ketende leba. Le ko breke teke zuka. Liandre rebo. Lord, I refuse to be ordinary. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Um, if I don't know if there is someone here you are trying to start a school. Um, actually, there are two categories of people I like to believe. I think there is someone um, you have something to do with children with special needs, children with special needs. Um, I think there is something about that assignment that you need to take a notch higher. And God has probably been nudging you. Um, you, you need to put that in effect. But I think there is someone that is contemplating starting a school. Um, I don't know what giant it is that is staring at you. That is the reason why you don't want to do it. But I've come to tell you, you must confront that giant. You must confront that giant. You must confront that giant and step out. Step out. Step out. Confront that giant. Confront that giant. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Thank you for, um, for this morning. Um, thank you for your spirit that is at work in us. Um, thank you because much more than we've discussed here, you are stirring up something within us. You are stirring up a desire within us to live beyond the ordinary. Glory to your holy name. We pray that this will not just end here. This will not just end here. But Lord, you will take it beyond this place. You will give us strength. You will give us strength. You will give us strength to the glory of your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much again for having me. God bless you. Um, God bless you very much. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Tayo. Thank you very much, sir. We pray, Lord Jesus, that what we have heard this morning will bear fruit in our lives in the name of Jesus. We pray that as you have poured out this morning, we pray that the Lord will continue to increase you on all sides in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, sir. I mean, it's it's a lot that you have shared with us this morning, and um, we pray that we'll be able to also go back, and the Lord will continue to reveal more to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, everyone, for staying back for today. Um, the next prayer watch would be at 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m. And the last prayer watch for this day would be at 9 p.m., the Bible study watch. And we'll continue again at 12 midnight on Monday, 3 a.m. And we're back again for Feed Purpose on, on Monday at 6 a.m. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely weekend.